Okay, this video is going to be uh, a simple one, just kind of building you up because I'm going to be doing uh, a motion tracking video here in the future, and I'm going to show you how to overlay 3D objects in Blender um, onto a video. So let me go ahead. I'm working with Blender 2.87a. Going to go ahead and in here, I'm going to hit uh, while with my cursor over the 3D viewpoint, one on the pad to get front view, uh, Control Alt zero on the pad to bring my camera to the front view here. Uh, if I hit F12 to render at this time, it looks like a black square because the lighting's behind it. I'm going to go ahead and go to the world settings, ambient occlusion, multiply, and turn on environment lighting. And now we can see our 3D cube here. In fact, let's delete the 3D cube and get something a little bit better. We're going to go ahead and use our, our monkey head here. We're going to smooth that out just to make it look nicer and, and subsurface it a little bit here. So under modifiers, we're going to subsurface, make it smooth. And now I can F12 that out. And, you know, we'll also give it a texture here, or a material here. Let's go ahead and make it a, a pink monkey head. There we go. Okay, so now we have this gray background, okay? Uh, which is what our sky is set to. And I am using the Blender the internal renderer for this tutorial. Uh, it's different with cycles. So I'm going to go to my render view here, and I'm going to go down to shading. And here under alpha, you can see sky. So alpha will be anything that's not a visible object. So anything other than 3D objects, which would be your background. Do you want to render the sky? Or if we click that, we can change this to transparent. And if you come down here under output, you can see it says PNG. And we have RGBA selected. That's by default. A is the alpha. So now if I hit F12, you can see our monkey head here, and you can see that we have, instead of that gray background, we got a checkered background, which is basically saying it's, tra it's transparency. Let's go ahead and put our resolution up full. There we go. Okay, so now I can F3 and save this as a PNG, bring it into GIMP and put it over a still image, or I can do a still image or video here in Blender using the compositor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to default and go to composite. I'm going to choose use nodes and I'm going to add a backdrop. The backdrop will let us see what we're doing real time in the background of our compositor here. If I do shift A here and I go uh, output viewer, put there and then I'm going to click this here. If you have not used the compositor, it can seem overwhelming at first, but it's not that difficult. And remember, anytime you're working in Blender, the keys are pretty much the same as if you were in the 3D viewer. So I'm going to left click uh, here. I'm going to actually, it's not the same because it's left click rather than right, right click, uh, but it's G to grab stuff and move them around. So that's what we have going on there. So now uh, anything in the background here will be what this viewer is seeing, but we have to remember at the end to link everything to our compositor because that's what our, that's going to be rendering. So I can shift A and say input, and I can choose an image if I want to put an image in the background, but a bunch of other stuff here. Mainly we're going to be looking at image, or I can do a movie clip. I can drag that here. I can say open, and I can go someplace where I have a movie clip. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that movie clip, and I'm going to go ahead and do shift A again, and I'm going to go to uh, output, or no, I'm sorry, color alpha over, and I'm going to put it in line here with our viewer. Now, the reason it went white is because this is a little weird. I, I've always found this weird about Blender. Okay, I'm going to link my image to the top image here and our other image, our 3D scene to the bottom image. You would think it would be the other way around. You would think that your background would be on the bottom and then the, the foreground stuff would be in the top, but it's reversed. It's just a little weird. So there we go. We have our monkey head uh, on the background here. And so now, you know, if I was to move it in our camera view here and hit F12 again to render it out, the monkey has now moved over there. Um, now you'll notice that in my 3D or in my renderer output here, we're not seeing the background, and that's because we haven't yet linked it to our com final composite. Now we have our image there with the monkey. Something to keep in mind though, both our images are the same size right now. The video here is 1080p and our scene is set to 1080p. But you'll notice if I, by default, this will be set to 50% and if I F12 render that out, you notice it now crops the video. To fix that, and I'll talk about this again in a future video when we do motion tracking, but 
Uh, if I do Shift A and I go down to Distort, we can scale, and we can drop that right in line there. We can scale the image to whatever we want. You know, I can do uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 on the X and Y, and it's lined up right. But now if I put this back up to 100% and I hit F12, you'll notice the video doesn't fill the screen. So what we want to do is instead of relative, we're going to change this to render size. Now whatever we set our render to, the video output will be uh, resized to that as well. So that's adding an image. And of course you can you know set keyframes and have this move all around our video. But in a future video coming up very soon, we are going to look at um, doing some motion tracking. So look forward to that video. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, be sure to uh, like, share, subscribe this video. I appreciate that. But if you have a little bit of money and you want to support me financially, I much appreciate it. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash MetalX1000. Uh, there should be a link to that in the description there. You can support me with as little as a dollar a month or more. Um, and uh, I do appreciate that. If you want to do a one-time support, you can always go to my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description there. And there, there's a link under support where you can... Uh, you know, uh, send me a PayPal payment, which I appreciate. Uh, anything that goes in my PayPal account, I usually use to buy hardware for my second channel, uh, you know, off of eBay and stuff. So small electronics I can do videos on. Um, so more money that goes in there, the more of those videos I can do. I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.